damos comienzo al solemne acto de incorporación del ilustrísimo doctor don Yuri Kondratenko como académico correspondiente para Ucrania. Procedemos a la lectura del acta de elección del nuevo académico. En el libro de actas de esta Real Corporación correspondiente a las Juntas Generales Plenarias de Académicos de Número, figura en fecha de 16 de junio de 2022 el acuerdo válido, entre otros, de nombrar académico correspondiente para Ucrania al ilustrísimo doctor Yuri Kondratenko tras seguir todos los requisitos estatutarios y reglamentarios. Y para que conste a los efectos de su toma de posesión previstas para el día 23 de febrero de 2023, firma la presente en Barcelona el excelentísimo señor presidente. ¿Ratificáis vuestra aceptación de ingreso en la Academia? Uh, yes. ¿Prometéis por vuestro honor guardar su estatuto y trabajar por ella, defendiéndola y aportando vuestra cooperación? Yes, I promise. En nombre de la Real Academia de Ciencias Económicas y Financieras del Instituto de España, Confirmamos solemnemente vuestro nombramiento de académico correspondiente para Ucrania. Podréis ocupar su tribuna pública y ostentar con orgullo la medalla que se os impone en este acto. Y al honrarla, rendís homenaje a todos cuantos académicos la ostentaron en el pasado. Que sus nombres permanezcan para siempre en vuestra memoria. Ellos constituyen nuestro acervo cultural y humano más valioso. Procurad enaltecer esta corporación que hoy os acoge en su seno y contribuid con vuestra meritoria labor al esplendor y honra de las ciencias cuyo estudio y fomento nos ha sido confiado. Si así lo hiciereis, que Dios os lo premie, y si no, os lo demande. El nuevo académico leerá su discurso de ingreso, cuyo título es Increasing Role of Artificial Intelligence in Human Activity, Development, Implementation and Perspectives. Your Excellency, RSF President Dr. Jaime Hilaluja, academicians, ladies and gentlemen. It is great honor to, for me to be incorporated into RSF and to have this presentation at RSF meeting in Barcelona. Thank you very much for your support. Due to continuous Russian aggression in Ukraine, today is a very difficult time with many victims including children and women. Many partner countries like Spain are indirectly involved in this war by friendly supporting Ukraine. Many thanks to Rasev and personally to His Excellency Dr. Jaime Hilaluja for the great solidarity and wide support of Ukrainian people and scientists during this awful war time. The topic of my presentation is increasing role of artificial intelligence in human activity, development, implementing, and perspectives. Artificial intelligence play a significant role in modern innovating stage of technologically developed countries. Methods and means of artificial intelligence are widely used in various areas of human activity. Today exist several definitions of AI. 
artificial intelligence is intelligence demonstrated by machines as opposite to the natural intelligence displayed by animals and humans. Early studies and theories were united by one common idea. It is quite possible to create an electronic brain. Today, intelligent system created by humans are capable of performing only a limited range of tasks, are still significantly dependent on humans and don't have autonomy. However, even now, at the initial stages of their development, AI systems notably interact with the world society, influencing essential decisions and new visions of the future. One of the main tasks today is to ensure comprehensive and transparent research in the field of human-centered AI systems and the creation of effective system of their control, which will allow AI to improve the quality of human life and create the most favorable condition for the future development of science and technology. It is well known three types of artificial intelligence, weak or applied artificial intelligence, strong artificial intelligence, and artificial super intelligence. Among the main methods, models, and tools of artificial intelligence are logic programming, automated reasoning, fuzzy logic, artificial neural networks, ANN, deep learning, DL, generative adversarial neural network, GAN, such algorithm, mathematical optimization, and evolutionary computation, Bayesian network, hidden Markov model, Kalman filter, decision theory, statistical classification and machine learning, programming languages and hardware for artificial intelligence. Current artificial intelligence technologies such as deep learning become true amplifier of scientific discovery and development. AI helps speed up experimental simulation gather and process new data and prove new theoretical hypotheses in many scientific fields. Deep learning is one of the machine learning methods that is grounded on artificial neural network framework that can be trained based on supervised and unsupervised learning algorithms. The main concept of artificial neural networks was inspired by real biological systems. Today, AI methods show incredibly successful practical results in doing science. For example, <clears throat> using artificial intelligence, researchers from Flatiron Institute have compressed a daunting quantum problem that will now require 100,000 equations only into four equations, all without sacrificing accuracy. Machine learning can certainly process and analyze information much faster than humans or other computational methods. For example, machine learning may detect diverse types of galaxies before scientists know they exist. ANNs are considered as a block, big black box. Researchers don't always understand exactly how artificial neural networks operate, especially when it comes to complex architectures with many hidden layers of neurons. Nevertheless, deep learning systems continue contributing to progress across a range of different scientific fields. Proper technological unification and a combination of research efforts can lead to revolutionary results. AI technology can help to solve tasks such as combating climate change and optimizing outcomes in transport, medicine, agriculture, etc. In particular, with the help of AI technologies, Trading of financial instruments on stock exchange take place. 
unmanned driving of vehicles is carried out. Medical diagnoses are established. Large volumes of data are analyzed. Images are recognized and generated. Industrial and household robots are created as well as high precision autonomous weapons. Investment in the development of AI technologies in the world are constantly growing. Some experts predict that by 2030, the use of AI will increase GDP in China by 26%, North America by 14%, and Europe by approximately 10%. The field of artificial intelligence in Ukraine is also developing rapidly. Governments around the world see AI as nation-defining capability. The emerging AI policy landscape is a major driver defining future global competitiveness and profoundly shaping human, humanity's future. Holland IQ published information about 50 national AI strategies representing 90% of global GDP. Each national strategy focuses on AI development and implementation, taking into account the peculiarities of the corresponding country's economy, the structure of industrial and agricultural sectors, and perspective changes in educational and science. In particular, Canada was the first country to release a national AI strategy. The Pan-Canadian Artificial Intelligence Strategy announced in 2017 federal budget is a five-year $125 million plan to invest in AI research. China announced its ambition to lead the world in AI in its 2017 development plan and next generation artificial intelligence. By 2030, the government aims to cultivate AI industry worth 1 trillion GMB with related industries worth 10 trillion GMB. In November 2018, the German government adopted a national AI strategy and a market 3 billion euros for investment in AI research and development. Japan was the second country to develop a national AI strategy. The government hopes to dramatically increase young AI researchers, partly by providing funds to priority fields. Another element of the strategy is to unify data formats and standards throughout various industries to enhance the ability to utilize big data techniques in Japan. The Spanish Ministry of Science, Innovation and Universities launched the RDI strategy in AI in March 2019. This RDI strategy is intended to serve as initial embryo for developing a full and national strategy for artificial intelligence in the future. The United Arab Emirates became the first country in the world to create a Ministry of Artificial Intelligence and the first in the Middle East to launch AI strategy. The United States launched the American AI Initiative in the form of executive order in February 2019. National AI strategies are developed also in Austria, Belgium, Chile, Brazil, Colombia, Portugal, Poland, Italy, Denmark, Finland, and other countries. Experts estimate that AI has the potential to deliver additional global economic activity of around 13 trillion by 2030, or about 16% higher cumulative GDP compared with today. Securing this economic growth combined with a soft power and AI leadership role will bring any nation 
makes it major social and economic policy priority. Ukraine occupies a significant segment of the world market of artificial intelligence technologies and is among the top three countries in Eastern Europe, according to the number of companies working in the field of artificial intelligence. The cabinet of ministers of Ukraine approved the conception for AI development and implementation in December, 2020. Public discussion of the final version of the national strategy began at the end of 2021. Unfortunately, the Russian attack on Ukraine on February 24 last year and the subsequent brutal war so slowed down the process of final approval and the state level of the strategy for development of AI in Ukraine. Hope it is possible to finalize the AI national strategy in Ukraine with a sign from the president of Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky, in near future after our victory. Let us consider successful examples of the use of AI in different countries and in different areas that confirm a significant increase in economic indicators due to the creation of opportunities for more effective solutions to complex technical, economic, social, and humanitarian tasks. In education, education is a key factor that allows nations to realize their AI ambitions, but the shortage of skilled talent remains the number one barrier to innovation. AI also plays an important role in the training processes, especially when it comes to self-education or the search for the necessary information. AI-powered recommendation algorithms provide accurate recommendations that are relevant to the interest of both students and teachers. This is already very effectively implemented in YouTube video hosting and online learning platform Coursera and Udemy. The main areas in education where AI already is effectively used are task automation, personalized learning, universal access, smart content creation, teaching the teacher, identifying classroom weakness, 24-7 assistance. For example, a new neural network model from DeepMind, call it Plato, figure out the laws of physics with the help of video. The students can get an intuitive understanding of physics only after 28 hours of analyzing video demonstrating various physical objects interactions and dynamics. It is also worth to noting the successful result of United Ukrainian University, Triple U, an innovative online education platform from Coursera and edX for Ukrainian universities with a full cycles of training with the help of the Edu Intelligent Board. Catalog of educational program consisting of 6,000 courses, Coursera, edX, Cognitive Class, Intella Edu, Progressive Edu Foundation, virtual really um, reality training, gamification of learning. Triple E platform supports projects related to the implementation of the latest technologies in education. In medicine, some publication in medicine describes the process of developing new molecules that lasted only 21 days using artificial intelligence and GAN. It was also reported that GANs can successfully design novel molecules for different inflammation, fibrosis, and cancer-induced cancer, uh, cancer protein targets. Deep learning and GAN are actively used in medical imaging. X-ray, magnetic resonance imaging, positron emission tomography. 
as a powerful tool that allows medical experts and radiologists to detect severe pathologies and diseases in the early stages with a high percentage of accuracy. Successful, useful cases in medicine are disease diagnosis and detection, personalized disease treatment, medical imaging, clinical trial efficiency, accelerated drug discovery and development, automatic detection of target proteins, biomarker, biomarkers identification, improved gene editing. In military, NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, announced in July 2024, a 1 billion venture capital fund that will focus on technological, including AI. This fund will invest in defense startups and other investment funds related to the development of artificial intelligence for defense needs. In June, the United Kingdom announced a strategy to modernize its defense program based on AI technologies. The strategy facilitates military investment in civilian AI development project and establish a defense AI center to centralize military AI research and development. Also in June, Germany allocated 500 million euros for research and technological development, including artificial intelligence. In industry, AI and robots can perform actions repeatedly without critical errors and develop more competent production models to solve automation tasks. Successful AI use cases in industry are diagnostic forecasting of the equipment's condition and predictive maintenance, streamlining paperwork using robotic process automation, computer vision for quality insurance and manufactured product inspection, demand forecasting for supply chain efficiently improvement, warehouse management and automation, transportation logistics, autonomous vehicles, factory automation, industrial de design and cybersecurity. Scientists from the United States and China have built a system using graph neural networks to examine the interconnection between different sources of data from simulated fires. It can help save fire fighter lives by predicting deadly flare-ups during a fire. In space industry and research, artificial intelligence is gaining momentum in space exploration, demonstrating a powerful potential in the exploration of interstellar space with the help of innovating solutions and technologies. In particular, analysis of satellite data arrays, self-guided planetary rovers, autonomous space probes, intelligent system for automatic control of rockets, intelligent system interfaces of managed spacecraft. To date, there are quite optimistic developments in designing virtual assistant for astronauts and intelligent diagnostic systems that monitor and diagnose the health of satellites. AI technologies have also found their applications in space navigation and observational astronomy. Neural networks help improve photographic images obtained by telescopes better analyze statistical data and create synthetic samples for data sets that train specialized neural networks for solving astronomical problems. In the art, in Great Britain, artificial intelligence was tasked with scanning the painting Samson and Delila by Peter Paul Rubens. It turned out to be a fake. Artificial intelligence compared this painting with 148 other paintings by Rubens. The algorithm concluded that the probability of forgery is 91%. For comparison, 
the neural network was instructed to check another painting by Rubens, which is stored in the National Gallery. The artificial intelligence decided that it was indeed a painting by Rubens with a probability of 98%. On August 24, 2021, a synthesized Taras Shevchenko voice read Kobzar's poetry at the Shevchenko National Museum in Kyiv. The project was prepared for the 30th anniversary of the independence of Ukraine. Another example, developer Dell E Neural Network creates digital images based only natural language descriptions. Researchers from Kyoto University, Japan, found that people cannot distinguish haiku written by human from the creation of artificial intelligence. Haiku is a genre of Japanese lyrical poetry. Let me say just a few words about artificial intelligence research at the, my department of intelligent information system at Petromagila Black Sea National University, Mykolaiv, Ukraine. Among the successful research projects and results are machine learning technologies for neoplasm segmentation of brain MRI scans, binary classification of liver disease, manipulator control system, and increasing efficiency of robot sensor and control information process. Artificial neural network for recognition of brain tumor on MRI images, the identification of factors in image perception, adaptive control system on FPGA, web interfaces visual testing, decision-making for investment under uncertainty, monitoring and analysis of motor highway conditions and forecasting new nuclear power plants energy production. Generative adversarial neural network for creating photorealistic images and adaptive deep convolution GAN for fingerprint sam sample synthesis. Computer vision system for education using augmented reality technology and multi agent and evolutionary optimization, neuroevolutionary and neurophysic technologies for control of mobile robots, drone, and multi-coordinate plans. I'd like to underline that Ukrainian scientists widely use theoretical achievements and published results of Dr. Jaime Hilaluha, RASEF president, who is one of the pioneers in the development of fuzzy logic and one of its main promoter. The rapid development of artificial intelligence will significantly affect labor market. A certain percentage of jobs will be automated from 10% to 40% according to forecast of several EU countries and certain number of professions will undergo serious changes. In addition, the development of widespread adoption of AI technology will lead to creation of many new jobs. A certain number of employees will have to change jobs as well as change formal relationship with employees and update their skills more often. Eric Schmidt, a former Google CEO, compared AI to nuclear weapons. He point out the potential threats of AI and call it to, for the tech community to be more in line with the ethics and morality of the people it serves. The problem with AI is not that it has potentially world destroying force of a nuclear weapon. It is that AI is only as good as the designed people. Demis Hassabis, the CEO of DeepMind said that AI is a reflection of its creator. It cannot level a city in a 1.2 megaton blast, not unless a human teaches it to do so. Artificial intelligence is constantly changing our world. It is already the main driver of emerging technologies like big data, robotic, Internet of Things, and it will continue to act 
as technological innovator. The most perspective areas of human activity for AI implementation in near future are transportation, manufacturing, healthcare, education, media, customer service, finance, criminal justice and law, ecology, defense, agriculture, security, banking, and smart cities. AI is poised to have a major effect on climate change and environmental issues. AI is projected to have a lasting impact on practically every industry, as 60% of business are predicted to be affected by it. We are already seeing artificial intelligence in our smart devices, cars, healthcare system, and favorite applications and we will continue to see its influence permit deeper into many other industries. The emergence of artificial intelligence and its progressively wider impact on many sectors requires an assessment of its effect on the achievement of the sustainable development goals. The fast development of AI needs to be supported by the necessary regulatory insight and oversight for AI-based technologies to enable sustainable development. Failure to do so could result in gaps in transparency, safety, and ethical standards. Artificial intelligence will change the future of work in different countries, but the consequences will differ across the regions and industries. Artificial intelligence will lead to increased level of productivity, specializing in job roles, and increasing importance of human skills like creativity, problem solving, and quantitative skills. Also, artificial intelligence will increase economic growth this gains will not be evenly distributed. AI will benefit labor in some industries, but treating it in others. To address these gaps, policymakers should focus on restructuring school and university curricula to reflect the change in skill demands and providing economic relief to workers forced to leave the workplace and learn new skills. Comparative analysis and AI advantages and disadvantages, as well, as well as future perspectives of AI implementation for human activity, shows that AI will play a significant role in the economy of different countries with great influence on the labor market and peculiarities of human activities. High moral and ethical principles must be implemented in the design process for AI devices, intelligent robots, and systems. Finally, let me say that members of RSF and the Barcelona Economic Network make a great contribution to development of AI technicals. In, in this April, uh, Springer Nature will publish the book artificial intelligence in control and decision-making systems in the series studies in computational intelligence edited by me, edited by me, Dr. Vladik Krajnovich from United States, Dr. Witold Pedrich from Canada, academician of National Academy of Science of Ukraine, Dr. Arkady Chikri, and academician of uh, RASEF, Dr. Anna Maria Hill Lafuente. The book consists of collection of chapters presented by distinguished and experienced authors from 16 different countries, Australia, Brazil, Canada, Chile, Germany, Hungary, Israel, Italy, China, North Macedonia, Saudi Arabia, Spain, Tokyo, Tokyo United States, Ukraine, and Vietnam, including the chapters prepared by RASEF President Dr. Jaime Hilaluja and other members of RASEF and Barcelona Economic Network. These books uh, present contributions reporting on computational intelligence, 
fuzzy systems, as well as artificial intelligence techniques for modeling, optimization, control, and decision-making, together with application and case studies in management, economic sciences, and engineering. No doubts that exchange of experience between countries and scientists around the world will help to, will help to create perspective AI technologies that are friendly and peaceful to humankind. Thank you very much for your attention. Glory to Ukraine. Tiene la palabra el excelentísimo doctor Vicente Lierne, quien dará contestación a la disertación del nuevo académico. Excelentísimo señor presidente, excelentísimas y excelentísimos señoras y señores académicos, señoras y señores. En primer lugar, permítame expresar mi profundo agradecimiento a esta Real Corporación por concederme el privilegio de dar respuesta al discurso del nuevo académico doctor Yuri Kondratenko. Al honor de mostrar la excelente trayectoria y los méritos de quien va a ingresar en este acto, se añade la responsabilidad de poder representar a una institución que trabaja y desarrolla una dilatada labor en el ámbito económico y financiero, en sintonía con los principios fundamentales de la sociedad en la que vivimos. Una sociedad en la que ha irrumpido la inteligencia artificial para acomodarse tanto en los espacios públicos como en los más privados y cotidianos. De ahí el enorme interés de un discurso como el que acabamos de escuchar, papel creciente de la inteligencia artificial en la actividad humana, desarrollo, aplicación y perspectivas. Para los que trabajamos en aspectos relacionados con la inteligencia artificial, las aportaciones del doctor Kondratenko han sido referencias indispensables desde los años 90. Por esta razón, tuve contacto con una buena parte de su obra mucho antes de tener el honor de conocerlo personalmente en las jornadas de la Barcelona Economics Network, la red internacional de investigación económica que creó la Real Academia de Ciencias Económicas y Financieras para reunir científicos y hombres de empresa capaces de impulsar ideas y proyectos, de trazar caminos hacia la creación y la gestión de sistemas económicos humanistas. En el discurso que hemos tenido el privilegio de escuchar, en un obligado breve espacio de tiempo, nuestro nuevo académico ha dedicado sus primeras palabras, como no podía ser de otra manera, a la dolorosa situación bélica por la que atraviesa su país, Ucrania, para acabar su parlamento con la idea esperanzadora de que el intercambio de experiencias entre países y científicos de todo el mundo ayudará a crear tecnologías de inteligencia artificial con perspectiva, amistosas y pacíficas para la humanidad. En cuanto a su currículum, el profesor Kondratenko combina la investigación científica, inteligencia artificial en economía e ingeniería, conjuntos y lógica difusos, sistemas inteligentes de toma de decisiones, sistemas de control, robótica, sensores y automatización, con la docencia, la organización y las actividades editoriales, lo que le ha proporcionado un prestigio en su ámbito que ha traspasado todas las fronteras. Ejemplo de trabajo, esfuerzo, constancia y tenacidad, ciertamente resulta complejo resumir la trayectoria de quien a partir de hoy será un nuevo miembro de nuestra Real Academia. Sin embargo, permítanme que me tome la licencia de exponer una breve y obligada síntesis de su trayectoria curricular. Yuri Kondratenko se graduó en el Instituto de Construcción Naval de Nikolayev, Ucrania, con diploma de honor. Alcanzó el grado de doctor en 1983 y 11 años más tarde obtuvo el título de doctor en ciencias en el, en el campo de los sistemas informáticos y de control en la Universidad Politécnica Nacional de Odessa, también en Ucrania. Desde 1999 es catedrático y director del Departamento de Sistemas de Información Inteligentes de la Universidad Nacional del Mar Negro, Petro Mojila, de también de Ucrania, bajo cuya supervisión se ha preparado y defendido 11 tesis doctorales y dos tesis para ser doctor en ciencias. Es académico de la Academia Ucraniana de Cibernética Económica, además es investigador principal y coordinador de proyectos de investigación nacionales e internacionales en varias firmas industriales de China y Ucrania. 
en universidades de Reino Unido, Italia, España, Alemania, Portugal, Suecia y Ucrania y en el Observatorio de Investigación Económico-Financiera de nuestra Real Corporación. El profesor Kondratenko es autor de 11 libros, editor de otros 16 y de 143 patentes en el campo de la informática, la robótica y la inteligencia artificial y de más de 200 artículos, capítulos de libro y ponencias en revistas internacionales, libros editados y actas, todos ellos en, ed en editoriales de reconocido prestigio. Es miembro de los consejos editoriales de seis revistas científicas internacionales de altísimo impacto y seis ucranianas, así como miembro del Comité Científico del Consejo Nacional de Ucrania para el Desarrollo de la Ciencia y la Tecnología, académico de la Academia de Ciencias de la Construcción Naval de Ucrania y académico correspondiente de la Real Academia Europea de Doctores. Ha sido presidente y miembro de los comités de programa de varias conferencias internacionales en el campo de la inteligencia artificial, el soft computing, la modelización, la simulación, los métodos cuantitativos en economía, la toma de decisiones y el control. Ocuparía un tiempo que va mucho más allá de lo prudente enumerar las conferencias y revistas internacionales en las que ha actuado como revisor. Así que, como su pertenencia a consejos académicos científicos de varias universidades, entre las que está la Universidad de Barcelona desde 2015, o de las asociaciones científicas y comité de los que forma parte. Por eso solo destacaré tres. La Asociación de Matemática Aplicada y Mecánica de Alemania, el Comité de Concesión de Premios del Gabinete de Ministros de Ucrania en el ámbito de las tecnologías innovadoras y miembro honorario de la Barcelona Economic Network. Ha recibido varias subvenciones y becas internacionales para realizar investigaciones en distintas universidades de la República Popular China, Alemania y Estados Unidos. Entre ellas resaltaré la beca especial para científicos destacados desde 2021 concedida por el presidente de Ucrania. Ha sido profesor visitante de multitud de universidades en las que además de los vínculos científicos ha creado vínculos de camaradería que sin duda influyen muy positivamente en la investigación. Como no podría ser de otra manera, la trayectoria del profesor Kondratenko lo ha hecho merecedor de más de una docena de premios y menciones entre los que destacaré el de Inventor de Honor de Ucrania en 2008 o la Medalla de Honor por sus logros científicos y educativos del Ministerio de Ciencia y Educación de Ucrania en 2019. Centrándome ahora en el extraordinario discurso del doctor Kondratenko, este no ha sido más que un botón de muestra del trabajo y los logros de una carrera dedicado al ámbito universitario, a la investigación y a la aplicación de la inteligencia artificial al servicio de la sociedad. Ha presentado la inteligencia artificial como un elemento decisivo en la etapa de desarrollo innovador de los países tecnológicamente avanzados. De hecho, aunque está claro que a partir de las nuevas tecnologías aumentará el crecimiento económico, este incremento no se distribuirá uniformemente. Las comunidades rurales, que ya se enfrentan a altos niveles de inseguridad laboral, se verán sometidas a una presión adicional. Por otro lado, la inteligencia artificial potenciará la creación de puestos de trabajo en algunos sectores, pero amenazará la conservación de otros. La automatización complementará las funciones laborales en campos de gran crecimiento como la sanidad, donde no hay un sustituto para los profesionales altamente cualificados, pero sustituirá puestos de trabajo en industrias que dependen de rutinas estandarizadas. Al hacer un breve recorrido por la historia y las características de la inteligencia artificial, nuestro nuevo académico ha puesto de manifiesto su sólida formación científica por la precisión y la capacidad de síntesis con las que ha resaltado todos los periodos, tanto los de plena expansión como los periodos en los que se ha mostrado menos interés, denominados inviernos. Tras describir los tres tipos de inteligencia artificial, débil, fuerte y superinteligencia artificial, ha descrito sus principales métodos, modelos y herramientas, entre los que se encuentran la lógica, la optimización, los métodos para el razonamiento con incertidumbre, las redes neuronales, etc. Como hemos podido comprobar, en el discurso, el hecho de que los algoritmos tengan capacidad de detectar el entorno, aprender y tomar decisiones en función de las entradas que reciben y sus objetivos, nos hace enfrentarnos a un cambio de paradigma en la toma de decisiones. Estamos ante la posibilidad real de una revisión constante de los parámetros de los modelos para que sean lo más ajustados posibles a la realidad. Por supuesto, esto no quita que la auténtica realidad esté indefectiblemente impregnada de incertidumbre y que por más ajustes que se hagan no llegaremos a escenarios de certeza absoluta. Pero lo que es evidente es que los datos, o mejor dicho, la información, 
se ha convertido en una materia prima muy valiosa. En la actualidad, todos somos conscientes de que la inteligencia artificial puede superar a las personas cuando se trata de procesar grandes cantidades de datos y reconocer patrones o anomalías que expertos humanos nunca habrían podido detectar. Esto ha hecho que sus tecnologías puedan ayudar a afrontar retos como la lucha contra el cambio climático y a optimizar los resultados en ámbitos como la economía, el transporte, la medicina y la agricultura. Pensemos, por ejemplo, cómo se negocian actualmente los instrumentos financieros, en la bolsa, en los vehículos sin conductor, en los diagnósticos médicos, los robots industriales y domésticos o las armas automáticas de alta precisión. Sin embargo, como afirma el nuevo académico, no podemos pasar por alto que todo eso conlleva graves problemas como la ciberseguridad, la falta de transparencia de las herramientas, los derechos de los sistemas, los problemas de copyright, las decisiones sesgadas y los problemas denominados de falsificación profunda. Tras un breve pero preciso recorrido por la situación de la inteligencia artificial en diferentes países, así como las estrategias nacionales, se ha detenido en la situación de Ucrania, de cuyo plan es partícipe y nos ha concedido el privilegio de, con de conocer de primera mano las líneas de investigación en el Departamento de Sistemas de Información Inteligentes de la Universidad Nacional del Mar Negro, Petro Mojila, que dirige el doctor Kondratenko. Ojalá la difícil situación por la que atraviesa Ucrania pase pronto y no se interrumpan los planes marcados por nuestro nuevo académico. Un análisis comparativo de las ventajas y las desventajas de la inteligencia artificial, así como de las perspectivas futuras de su aplicación a la actividad humana, muestra que desempeñará un papel significativo en la economía, con gran influencia en el mercado laboral y en las peculiaridades de la actividad humana. Ha señalado nuestro nuevo académico que algunos expertos predicen que en, que en 2030 el uso de inteligencia artificial aumentará el PIB de China en un 26%, en Norteamérica en un 14% y en Europa aproximadamente un 10%. Pero como bien ha puntualizado, los procesos de diseño de dispositivos, robots inteligentes y sistemas en general deben ir acompañados de la necesaria visión y supervisión reglamentarias para permitir un desarrollo sostenible. De lo contrario, podrían producirse lagunas en la transparencia, la seguridad y las normas éticas. Y esta es una línea roja que no debemos traspasar. Al vertiginoso crecimiento de la inteligencia artificial deben aplicársele elevados principios morales y éticos que nunca deberían pasarse por alto. Permítanme finalmente reiterar mi enhorabuena al doctor Yuri Kondratenko por su magnífico discurso. Su investigación constituye, sin duda, una nueva aportación que enriquece y potencia los trabajos y hallazgos de nuestra magna institución. Por último, y evitando alargar en exceso mis palabras, desearía manifestar una vez más mi más profundo agradecimiento a la Real Academia de Ciencias Económicas y Financieras por haberme ahorrado designándome para elaborar este discurso de contestación y expresar mi, deseo, mi sincero deseo de que la inteligencia artificial ayude a crear tecnologías eficaces guiadas por el humanismo, con las exigencias de sostenibilidad, solidaridad y, más que nunca en estos momentos, la búsqueda de soluciones pacíficas. Muchas gracias por su atención. Vamos a hacer entrega al recipiendario del diploma acreditativo de nuevo académico. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much. Constituye para nosotros una gran satisfacción dar la más cordial bienvenida al nuevo académico deseándole toda suerte de éxitos en su andadura en nuestra Real Corporación. A todos cuantos han asistido a este solemne acto, nuestro profundo agradecimiento. Su presencia ha colaborado en el objetivo de dar realce a nuestras actividades para mayor esplendor y gloria de las ciencias económicas y financieras. El acto académico ha terminado, se levanta la sesión. <risa>